Welcome everyone to the Chuck Jones Creative Side Chat. Uh, we've been blessed all summer long to have an amazing array of artists and creatives join us as they tell us some amazing stories. I know I've been fully inspired by all kinds of things that I've picked up from these artists and fellow creatives. And tonight is going to be no different. Um, as we are streaming, if you have questions uh, for Fran, who is our guest that I will introduce here in one moment, you can put them in through Facebook or in through Zoom in the chat. And please feel free to ask questions and then I will pass them along to Fran as we hang out here this evening. So without further ado, I have to say that getting to know Fran is an absolute delight. And I could listen to her talk all day long. Not only is she a, an extremely talented artist, she's just a wonderful human being to hang out with. So it's a privilege here on a September evening to bring in the, I'm gonna say master, because I've seen all of your stuff and it's amazing. Uh, not just in the portrait work, but just how she produces this work. The amazing Fran Lu. Fran, welcome to the Chuck Jones Creative Side Chat. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. So um, we have had the pleasure, I have had the pleasure of getting to know you a little bit a few days ago as we, as we started up. And I've, I've known your work for years because I've seen it with the Chuck Jones Galleries. And I've got to tell you, um, I'm absolutely blown away. It's, there's something to, I know we had discussed this a little bit, um, there's something to a photograph as a piece of art um, in a portrait, but then there's something that you do in drawing these beautiful portraits that brings out so much more than I have ever seen captured in a photograph. And you've got an amazing story on how you started all this. And what I wanted for people to get to know this evening, which I think is fascinating, is starting out when you were, when you were very young. So Fran, did you always know you wanted to be an artist? Yes, on some level, even as a child. That's, I love to do draw and loved art, so that was the direction I was always taking. So I would say yes. Well, and, and so you started out at a, at a young age, experimenting with, with creative tools, and you had a pretty good helper. I've, I think it's phenomenal that, you know, and I would love to, for you to tell our audience about your connection with your father and how he helped inspire this and just thrive in this creative atmosphere and what he would do. What was it like growing up with your father who encouraged this, draw, this artistic spirit in you? Um, I'd like to start a little earlier, if that's okay with you, the earlier yeah. child. Sure. Would that be okay? Absolutely. Well, I have an unusual uh, childhood. First three years, I was uh, born in, um, in a displaced persons camp in uh, Germany after the war. And uh, it was a very unusual environment. Um, it was an American base, which uh, was holding, uh, keeping people that were displaced all over Europe, uh, giving them homes till a home till they found permanent location. Uh, so why I mentioned that is something actually that Robert had uh, pointed out to me, I hadn't been fully aware of it, is that that was a very unusual environment for a young child and that there were very intense emotions of, as you can imagine, of, of, of hope and joy of being alive and, and, and hope, uh, looking forward to a wonderful future and sadness for loss of family. So I absorbed these emotions as probably like a sponge. <laughs> and, uh, and we arrived in America having found the family sponsors um, at, when I was three years old. And um, straight from the, uh, <laughs> from the ship, three weeks later, I was playing at the beach. <laughs> so it was a great change. And I never thought too much about it, just continued a living like every other child. Um, and my father came from a family of artists and then um, his sister, my aunt, who I had not never met, was a uh, well-known uh, portrait artist in uh, Russia. And she painted uh, the officials, uh, high officials, and was obviously had some talent. And he had uh, talent, but it was, he was totally untrained. So uh, 
age three, he started to teach me how to draw faces. They were a little primitive, but way more than I knew at three. And it was, of course, a joy to be doing this with my daddy. And, um, and he bought me art books. And he, he, they had fairly advanced books, too. And uh, he instilled the love of art in me at a very young age. And, um, and then I, I would say that I had you know, a lot of fun with him. And, and whatever you, you, know, you have, uh, your parents influence you in those ways. So I, I am always uh, grateful for his in encouragement and the time he spent with me. He gave me a lot of attention and a lot of it centered around art. So you had, you had a, and I, and I remember, you know, you explaining the, those emotions and stuff that in the intense childhood that you have and not really, not really, uh, you know, at three, you're not necessarily processing that. It's just kind of affecting you. And that, that's, you can see some of that influence in your, in what you've been creating. And I would assume like, you know, from a young age and just how that influenced your style and perception of what yes. you would bring to life. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, my mom told me when I was about four, I recall the conversation. She said, I had, uh, she says, you, you always can pick up fe people's feelings. And I didn't know what that meant at you know, age four, but I remember the comment. Um, and I think that plays a big part in this uh, high sensitivity that I seem to have developed in, in, that is in my art that I can tune into people and capture their emotions and feelings and it's seen in the work and in my art or my portraits in particular well and, and i you know as we were as we had talked on on tuesday and we were kind of discussing this i think our good friend robert patrick who i will raise a glass to right now and your good friend uh really he's even the one that highlighted that and what he could see in in just your portraits and people just taking a look at what you're doing in portraits and seeing that emotion come out, which is why I love what you do. I, you know, it, to me, it's so much more than a photograph and, and it, it's a piece of art that lives and breathes. Uh, and I love what you do. So I love that style. Thank you very much. Now you're, you're going through, you're going through school, you're drawing probably a fair amount, right? As you go through junior high and high school and you have the opportunity, how did, how did, as you're in high school, you're kind of figuring out what you want to do. How does that go from, I want to become an artist or I want to get into that field? Where do you take the next step in college? Well, when I was in high school, I had a, um, a te an art teacher whose class I enjoyed very much. Uh, and I took it eight times. <laughs> uh. And, <laughs> and um, I, I skipped lunch, I skipped recess, I just kept taking his art class and, <laughs> and he, um, I came from a middle class background and I, I knew I was programmed that, you know, I had to earn a living and, um, and he suggested that I become an art teacher and I he said, you know, good idea. And so I, that was where my, you know, direction or I thought where my direction would be. And I went on to Brooklyn college, which was, um, a very fine um, city of university, uh, part of City University in New York is a very fine college and with a fairly good art department at the time. And I went on to study there. And um, it, it, the, I always loved realism. It was my, I was drawn to realism um, rather than the abstract art. And there was one teacher, and you may be familiar with it, his name was uh, Philip Perlstein. And he was, became very, um, popular and well-known quickly because he was the first to uh, re-enter the figurative world, not realism in a traditional way, in his own unique way, but it was figurative realism work. So I took his class in my senior year, and I was only 19 as a senior in college and had to start thinking about what I wanted to do <laughs> when I grew up. And he <laughs> graduated and he suggested I remember the conversation. He, he suggested, a friend, why don't you uh, graduate and, and get a, a studio and paint and you could be famous when you're 40. <laughs> and um, being only 19, and, and I, I said what sounded glibly, 
um, oh, I'm too middle class for that. I, I can't live a bohemian life. I have to eat. <laughs> so, and I said, so, so I'll be famous when I'm 50. Big deal. <laughs> right? So it sounded that I took it lightly, but actually that comment influenced the rest of my life. It, gave, it became a, um, a dream that I would like to do that and that um, that it that um, and it gave me a belief in myself that I could do that, and it stayed with me for you know well throughout the years. It was what he that comment was influential among other comments that were followed. So I went on to uh, get a master's degree at Boston University, and then teach, um, and uh, I taught for a number of years, and and um, there was other things that came in between, but basically with the teaching, I taught for a few years. And after a while, I felt, I, I always enjoyed teaching and it was fun. And, and I, you know, the kids were you know, close to my age and we had a good time and they learned, but I, I felt that I wanted to do, you know, follow that dream that I was still uh, in the background. And finally, at age, you know, roughly about uh, 30 or so, I decided to go for it. I left teaching. I jumped off the cliff and held my nose and said, I want to go professional. And I did. And um, a particular teacher that I really need to mention, want to mention, I was, I became a very strong mentor, um, Cesar Borgia, and he was a former student of the late Frank Riley. Frank Riley was considered the foremost teacher of realism in the country. And he taught some of the great art illustrators of, of his time. I believe he passed away in the 1960s, so I never had a chance to meet him. But Caesar had studied with him for seven years and was able to pass on the information. So I studied with Caesar for a while. And I felt that I had gotten, this was the final training that I really needed, wanted to follow my, my particular goal of how to be a portrait artist, the style and the knowledge. And so um, that was, uh, I'll always be you know, grateful to him because he, he encouraged me enormously. You know, I, I find and, that, uh, I find that, um, and, and pardon me, but I, I, what I loved about what you had mentioned when we initially chatted about that was it's, it's very key um, really at any age, but to have people who are invested in you and can see the talent that you have, whether it's art, whether, you know, whatever field you're in, and, and we'll just concentrate on art tonight because um, of what you were able to do. So you have, you have people in your life that are influential that you respect that sit there and, and propel you forward. Because we all need that confidence at some point as we kind of question things. And, and I love the comment you made about just going for it. Like it's something that you would want to do and you go for it. And, and you took that leap. And good night. Look where that leap is. Look where you landed. I mean, good night. So, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to take this opportunity um, to do two things. One is I want people to see some of this early work of yours um, that we're referencing. You've got a, you've got a portrait on the, over the, your shoulder there, and we're going to show that. It's absolutely amazing. And I also wanted to tell people, as we're about to show some of your um, past work, uh, some of your early work, if you will, that uh, your site is up and live, and you can see what we're going to reference here in a little bit, which is the Stars of Hollywood. And Mr. Scott Ryder, if you can put up the, if you can put up the lower third on the bit dot Lee forward forward slash Fran Lou Studio, so F R A N L E W Studio. Uh, you can check out everything that's up there right now. It's an amazing collection of art, and so we'll get to that here in a little bit. But I wanted to pull up a few of your um, a few of your earlier pieces. So Scott, can you go ahead with the? I think we have the charcoal that we're starting with. Uh, and then we get into oil. So, Fran, when you're, you know, you had mentioned that you're really getting into it. Having some technical difficulties, Ben. Okay, no problem. You're having technical difficulties. I'm having a four-year-old and a two-year-old into the shot. <laughs> so it's one of those days. All right, hold on, guys. Daddy's on TV. All right. So anyway, Fran, when you started off and you got these instructors with you, um, 
and you, you're making it into portrait. How did that start? How did your entry into this world yeah. that you have quite dominated now, how did that begin? Well, after I, I went professional, after uh, a year and a half or so uh, uh, with, uh, at Caesars uh, Studio, I, um, it sort of happened on its own. It had a momentum. I, I had uh, portraits of uh, private subjects and got press on that and then uh, met different people from all walks of life that were well known, that weren't well known, that were, it, most people were a pleasure to get to know and you know, it was a lot by word of mouth. And then I had the good fortune of being commissioned by Matilda Cuomo, the, first, the former first lady, beloved first lady of New York State, uh, wife of uh, the governor of Cuomo at the time, uh, and, um, Mario Cuomo, and I was commissioned to do her official portrait to be displayed in the governor's mansion. And she was an absolute delight, and we're still friends to this day. And I painted a full length uh, portrait of her and I received enormous press. And so through that press, it continued to develop um, more, you know, continued uh, portraits continues to develop and uh, I was rolling. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we talk about, especially with what you do, you know, when you're good at something and you're, it's all about relationships and the relationships you were able to make specifically with um, the governor's wife and her portrait, which is gorgeous. There's, there's those things that just kind of start to cascade. Did you feel a momentum kind of building from that? Yes, I did. And um, I, I'd like to point out in that portrait you just showed is the staircase is the, the staircase from the governor's mansion. The rose is the New York state flower that she's holding. And that was her inaugural dress. And um, at the unveiling, at the Columbus Club in New York City, the uh, governor mentioned um, that, and to me privately at one of the luncheons that we had, uh, that he asked me a question which was very interesting and also stayed with me because I hadn't yet figured it out. He said, I've seen, it's a, it's a compliment that I'm sharing, that um, he's seen many portraits and they capture a likeness as, as mine does, but I captured the feelings. How do I do it? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. <laughs> and then that was the beginning of the search of how I captured the feeling prior to meeting Robert. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so that I did feel that would be a good thing to mention. And um, so, of course, of course uh, uh, the press that I received for years about her poetry uh, encouraged other commissions. Now, in, in I, I fair to say that your parents were quite proud of this accomplishment that you had. Yes. And specifically your mother, who oh, as, yeah. as, as was a little reserved, right? Uh, maybe a little introverted until this point. And <laughs> I, I, I think the story is hilarious. When your mother um, found out, you know, and, and here it is, and you're doing the portrait, how ex what, what level there there's probably 50 levels of excitement that i can count what level of excitement did she display on your behalf to the governor's wife well, she was thrilled to pieces and she took it upon herself <laughs> to bake matilda 50 rugelach you know rugelach is a little pastry and uh and hers was the best people used to come to my home and go straight to the freezer and take out her frozen rugelach and even frozen <laughs> And, and so she sent 50 to Matilda, and then Matilda writes me that I received 50 rugula from your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chris Cuomo, her, her son, one of her two sons, um, who uh, currently are popular uh, TV journalists, was 15 at the time, and that he ate all 50 in one sitting. <laughs> uh -oh, 50. <laughs> so... My mom promptly made 50 more. <laughs> sent it out. And then Matilda <laughs> went and told, told her chef that her ruggle 
my mom's rug look was so much better than his. <laughs> and to put it into the cover of Manch's recipe book. And so um, she wrote my mom a lovely letter, which I framed for her. And, um, and, uh, and she uh, invited my mom up to lunch in Albany, which she wasn't able to do, but the gesture was very special. So, so and she told me personally, she says, I understand your mother. She's Matilda's a mother of five. She's, she's so proud of you. She wanted to send me Ruggle. <laughs> 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 not, not only do you have, did you do the the portrait, but your mom is immortalized in the cookbook. <laughs> not, a, not a bad way to go for that. And you know, as as you so you, you get into the you get into the you're doing amazing portraits. You're you're gaining um, a lot of momentum with that. There's a lot of people inquiring. You're putting the work in. You know what, what I thought was really important about you know what you were mentioning before when we were discussing was the, you know the amount of work that you put in this this living artist as a career is not a when i feel like it i'll do something kind of thing you got to put the work in and you had mentioned just the work that you would do and the work ethic that went in and i think that's important for people to understand is this isn't something that oh, i'll just you know whip that out i think the, a misconception among people who maybe don't do this as a career is all oh, that's just easy for you but it's but it, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of work to pull that off. And I, what I want to do is, Scott, if you can show that portrait, it's the one that's over her shoulder right now. And because this there's a transition that comes in, and we go from doing portraits and oils, which this is gorgeous. And uh, could you talk a little bit about this? One? This was more of a personal portrait where I had a sub the subjects just sit for me and pose, uh, which I did at times because the uh, the formal portraits were mostly from photographs that were given to me and or that I personally took, you know, a photograph of my people myself because they were busy people and didn't have the time to sit. So I, I chose to um, do from time to time subject that's sad and it's a different style. It's a, I have a shorter period of time to work and it's a freer style. And this is one of my favorite earlier paintings. So you, and, and I love it. I love the lighting. Uh, it's, it's warm, you can feel the emotion in it. Um, and how, what would you say was, did you work in oil a lot in the, in the earlier periods? You found that was your medium of choice? That was pretty much the only period, uh, the only medium that people request, but from time to time, it was a charcoal. Yeah, and sometimes as a preliminary drawing to a larger piece, as I uh, did of uh, David Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, I made a preliminary drawing for a larger painting, which is now in the State of Israel uh, collection. And, and, and then occasionally a, a, a charcoal portrait, you know, just because I enjoyed it. So there's one right behind me. And uh, that is of a friend and it was commissioned, but I couldn't part with it. <laughs> <laughs> so they wanted you to do it, it like, great. I'll take it. So you, 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 they commissioned you for this and you just couldn't let it go. So you kept I couldn't it. let it go. So she said, well, just give me a photograph of it. I'll, I'll be okay. <laughs> it's, it was just like the emotion that I caught was, it was special. So I, and I, this is, you touched on a great subject because I, I wanted to segue into this and it was the painting that you did. You've gotten to do a lot of amazing things and I, the painting that you did for the state of Israel and what you went through in the process on that. And I know you just kind of barely, you just touched on it there, but really it's a, it's a very impactful story, especially for what the painting means. So um, how, how did this happen? And I want to let, I want to, people to hear it from you on how you get this commission to do this painting for the state of Israel, but not just any painting. What was involved in that? Well, it was the painting that I made wasn't actually for the state of Israel. It was for an organization that was um, selling prints of uh, significant paintings for peace. And so they commissioned me to do this painting with the, uh, which I had titled Lead Us in Peace. It was uh, the three early leaders of Israel and it showed the 
in the background was a Jerusalem with the the uh, Arab mosque and the Christian church and the, it, and the Moses with Ten Commandments in the um, background and faintly in the background and the dove of peace. It's a beautiful painting. And, uh, and then eventually, because it, it took me a year, I got that really almost at the start of my career. And it took me a year. I made um, three preliminary drawings of each of the figures, which was Moshe Dayan, the well-known uh, military figure at the time, and Golda Meir, who is a, the, most of us are familiar with, the, one of the important prime ministers, and Dave Van Gurion, the first prime minister. And so I had three preliminary drawings, one preliminary painting, and then the final painting, which was, I believe, 34 by 50 inches, quite large. So that was eventually collected by the Jewish Museum in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the Ben-Gurion drawing uh, was displayed in the Israeli consulate in New York City. And then when the administrations changed, they asked to, if, I, if they could have the piece of the David Ben-Gurion drawing. And that's uh, how it happened. Um, I think it had a life of its own. You, know, you meet these different people and uh, goes in different directions. It was very interesting. My work is extremely interesting because I meet people from all walks of life, famous and private. And it's um, I, people I probably would never have met otherwise. And I, I, I love that story. And Scott, if you could, if you could grab the, some of the stills that we have of the Hollywood, Stars of Hollywood. Um, so Fran, as, as we get into, you know, you, You've done some amazing work for some amazing people and it's been showcased all over the world and we're putting up right now what you're working in in specific for the chuck jones galleries which is the stars of hollywood and your portraiture and i noticed these are all charcoal yes and and i i found it fascinating how there's a reason why you switched from oil to yes. charcoal what what was that reason well i had been um, painting portraits, some of them quite large, for 20, 20 years, and I had developed the allergy to turpentine. <laughs> and so I took a break, um, rethought what I'd like to do, and I always loved charcoal, and it's really the same thinking process, same creative process. So I sought to work in charcoal um, only, and, and did, uh, created a a, a couple of uh, these drawings, iconic figures, and I approached um, Warner Brothers in California with uh, one or two of my pieces, as I recall, it's a while ago, and they recommended that I call Robert <laughs> at the Chuck Jones Gallery, and, and that's how that happened. This, he, he, he immediately loved my work, and, and I uh, it was about eight years ago, and we um, have a, a wonderful long-term relationship, and, and I'm very happy and proud to be part of the gallery. So we get, you know, as we had brought up, you, you've got some strong influences and in people that have influenced you um, as a, an artist and a creative. And, you know, in the, there's two that I want to bring up. And in this, as this is the Chuck Jones creative side chat, you know, we had mentioned that that influence that Chuck had on you. And I would wonder, you know, as to our audience, what what impact did Chuck have on you personally, professionally as a creative in what you were doing? Well, it's very interesting because I hadn't really been exposed to animation art that much. Um, more, I was trained uh, classical academic realism. And uh, as I, I uh, got to know Chuck's work, I saw very similar uh, thinking of, of design, of action, of the action lines, the movement, and the creation of emotion of these wonderful figures that he invented uh, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, you know, to name a few, and the different emotions that they um, conveyed and, and brought to life and the uh, 
it was similar in, in certain levels of the, uh, my approach too. It was very interesting to see that. And I, I saw some of his uh, studies and you could see the basic lines and the gestures. And it's pretty, the gestures are pretty much the same that I would do in the beginning of a drawing. And uh, it, it was actually basic to any art form that is uh, sometimes sorely missing in, in training. You so I, I enjoyed that, and I thought he was an incredibly accomplished artist with an amazing imagination. And of course, that's all, you know, always very uh, inspiring. So, you know, we go from uh, this influence that you have with, with Chuck and, and that portrait. Scott, if we could put up that portrait real quick, too. What I wanted to tell people is um, for this evening, if if anything is purchased um, of Franz on the auction site, they will get a limited edition print on paper of uh, Franz Chuck Jones portrait, which is around a $225 value. Uh, and it's amazing because there again, you've captured that personality in that image of Chuck and kind of how we feel in the warm fuzzies. And you're able to pull that off with um, some amazing strokes of the, of the pencil. So this is available again if you purchase anything on um, with the bit.ly forward slash Fran Lu Studio, um, you will receive this limited edition as well. Now um, we go from Chuck Jones, Fran, and another big influence of yours, um, John Singer Sargent, and you know you had mentioned when like the gallery that um, he had at Grand Central and just kind of walking around and taking a look at that from an outside perspective and then getting invited to the, on the inside. What was it, what was it about John Singer Sargent that had attracted you and then to see that his gallery and then, and then what happened? And, and what, and what I love about this is you just went for it. So it's kind of like a dream and I'll let you tell the story. John Singer Sargent, Grand Central Gallery, Fran Lu. Definitely a dream <laughs> come true. I, um, when I was still uh, studying, my instructor, uh, my mentor, Caesar, said, why don't you go over to the Biltmore Hotel, the uh, Grand Central Art Galleries. It's a, it's a wonderful gallery, go look at it. I said, okay. So I went and, and I, it was just wonderful. It was, uh, it was founded by John Singer Sargent many years before, together with other prominent artists. And the work was, realism, the direction that I was going in, and it was very high quality. And I um, said to myself, gee, I wish I could be part of this gallery. I'd love to be part of this gallery. And, uh, and that's it, you know, and then uh, time passed, I guess about 10 years. And I was on my way as a successful portrait artist. And um, I was approached to uh, join the Grand Central Art Gallery roster of artists, um, and which had moved then from the Biltmore, which I believe closed, to uh, 57th Street in Manhattan. And it was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was a, a, a well-known gallery. It was the I best, I, I would believe they called it the best uh, gallery of realism in the country at the time. And it, uh, the influence of John Sicka Sargent and uh, the artists of his time was uh, throughout the gallery and the selection of the artists and the, the feeling of the, uh, of the gallery. And then we had a very long relationship, a successful relationship. And, um, and unfortunately, the gallery closed after 75 years. There was a recession in New York and, and it was a sad. So it, that had to, the, the feeling of being able to, you know, be a part of that and, and someone that you had looked up to has got to feel pretty amazing. It did. It really did. I, dreams come true. No, can come true. Right. Yeah, it, it was amazing. Yeah. And I, and I, I, I love that because that there's, there's a point, and like I said, out of every creative side chat that we've had, um, there's always something to pull from it, usually multiple things, but there's, there's, so many things as we hear from creatives in the field that are doing and 
the fact that you just went out for it, you went out to get it, you saw it, it was something that interested you, you were, you were passionate about it, and look what you made happen. And that to me is inspiring, you know, to, you. even when you might feel like, I don't know, is it too much of a risk, you know, and you start to create some self doubt, right? We create our own narrative um, to take the Fran Lu approach and just go for it. No, I, I was, um, after teaching the first three weeks when I left teaching, I didn't sleep for three nights. <laughs> 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 because I was, a, you know, it was, it, was, it was a risk, but it was a calculated risk. I felt I had reached a certain level of, of excellence and, and, and paid my dues with the studies that I had done. And it was something I just felt I, I, I was, my inner compass said, go for it. And I did, and uh, it wasn't easy. It doesn't, you know, it sounds easy, but it wasn't easy in the beginning. And the uh, work was hard at times, sometimes 12 hours a day, because there were deadlines on some of the portraits. But I loved it. I loved the studies, I loved the portraits. I, I was doing what I made me happy. Um, so what was it about, well, first of all, the, we'll get into a little bit more of the stars of Hollywood here in a moment, but um, cause this will, this dovetails right into it. And it's, you've got a, you've got a piece of art with the United States Federal Reserve, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Marlon Brando. And so talking about stars of Hollywood, how did that come about? I, uh, had, uh, as you'll see, as you know, many of you know that I had, uh, I did a series of uh, art, uh, art portraits in charcoal of well-known iconic uh, film stars, and I did one of Marlon Brando um, as uh, Johnny in the, the Wild Side, and uh, the, it depicted him as Johnny in the Wild Side, and uh, it was one of my favorite drawings. They, they all are. <laughs> and, um, and then it was purchased, and the, and the owner he purchased the owner purchased it for his wife. I'm trying to remember because this, every every drawing has its own story. And the owner had purchased it for his wife, and who had unfortunately passed away shortly after he had bought the drawing. And he he donated it to the Federal Reserve, United States Federal Reserve Fine Art Collection. But it's a tremendous review process that it has to go through. Uh, to be accepted. And um, they loved it. They felt it was, you know, Americana. And uh, they, uh, it's in their permanent collection. It will outlive me. <laughs> <laughs> so you go, what, and you go from uh, that star of Hollywood into your current collection of what we have available today. What is it about um, that? period in Hollywood history that really attracted you to do these portraits of Clark Gable, of Humphrey Bogart, you know, um, what is it about that, that just, you had to do it? Well, the, the, these, those were my favorite films. I was particularly drawn to um, that uh, period of time. And, uh, and the, I thought the, I thought the, the actors were amazing. Um, and uh, it gave, uh, I had great pleasure in, in seeing these uh, films and watching these stars and listening to the singers and, uh, and it, was, it was really a joy. And um, you know, the great uh, Jimmy Cagney and uh, I could see his uh, film a hundred times and the, you know, the talented, he was so talented and Clark Gable and, and Marilyn Monroe and the, uh, it was, I enjoyed it very much. I said, I enjoy it. And I, I've, uh, Marilyn Monroe, I've done a total of uh, four portraits, four drawings of her showing different sides of her. Um, friend of mine and colleague, uh, Scott Morrow has, I know, knew her personally as a child actor and he um, was shared with me some of these photographs, and uh, which I appreciate very much, and, um, I, and I love it, you know, to, 
the you have the the pieces in here and for me um i'm a big casablanca fan so your bogart and bergman is i love that piece Thank and you. i think it captures there's a glow in that film you know there's a there's a glow to that entire film how it was shot and i think you captured that immaculately like i can feel that film just by looking at what you did in this portrait and, and i think it's absolutely amazing um, again you can i check. really enjoy it Go because they, they gave so much pleasure to me and to you know most people that i know that to capture the again the feeling and and as a work of art on onto itself and the feeling is um and to also to do it from with a, not as a commission uh, to please or you know any particular requirement except my own design it was totally my own and uh that was i love that and you know speaking of commissions i would be remiss if i did not bring up the fact that this evening uh fran is available for commissions and all you need to do is talk with your representative and and they can get in touch uh with this whole process and fran um there is, there's nothing quite like, especially in what you do in portraits, there's nothing quite like that um, piece of art, right? It's not just a photograph. And Fran is available for commissions. So that's something that you can discuss with your representative. Um, I, would, I would say you would, you would lose an incredible opportunity if you did not have this very talented young lady do something in portraiture for yourself, your family. And I believe, Fran, it's, pretty much anything that they're really interested in. Is that correct? It could be a, pro a personal commission of a family member. It could be of a beloved uh, favorite actor, actress. Um, it's basically who one honors and loves. And um, it's an extremely meaningful gift that lasts forever and becomes a family treasure and um, it's extremely uh, personal and uh, it's, it speaks of love and honor and respect and, um, and the, the feelings uh, stay, in, you know, are in the, in the uh, drawings and it gives great pleasure. It gives me great pleasure because it gives people great pleasure. It's a joy. Well, and, and we have, it's, it's immaculate what you put together. So we have a fantastic opportunity with you to, for you to provide that, which I appreciate because someone of your, of your talent and stature to, to offer that to our guests is, is quite a gift in and of itself. Um, I'm going to mention one more thing so yeah. you can have an idea. Um, they were, in the, for the James Cagney, there were 10 people in the James Cagney Facebook group wanted a portrait of James Cagney. <laughs> so, I can't do that. I, I mean, no, not 10, 10. So we made a portrait and, and, and Chuck Jones made prints. And so 10, and they're ex outstanding quality prints. And so 10 people got their portrait. <laughs> and, the, and the joy that, of course, these people, uh, these friends now are um, love and adore James Cagney, and they are three, you know, it's a featured piece in each person's home. But then we go to a personal portrait, for example. Um, I, I put it up on Facebook. I, for a beloved cousin, I had painted a portrait in charcoal of her and her late husband. And I, she put it in a place in his room that had been his study, and she wrote me that, told me that, she went every day in the room and talked to him because she said, how did you make him so alive? You didn't even really get to know him well. He's a very quiet man. He hardly spoke. But, <laughs> but I told him. I did get a sense of him. And it meant so much to her. And of, of course, it's going to mean so much to me that it, it, it meant so much to her. So now another family member, she has passed away since, and another family member um, has it in their home collection and yeah. continues, you know, it'll be part of the family. Absolutely. So there's many reasons to have a portrait. And one could be a gift, an anniversary gift, or, or any, any uh, there's a million directions they could go in. 
Well, you know, we've got, um, if you've got a question for Fran, go ahead and pop it in the chat. I know, Jester, you've got your hand up. Um, go ahead and pop the question in the chat, and then we will, we will, I will ask that of Fran, and she can answer your questions. Um, so, Fran, you know, when we talked about kind of that evolution of things, right, you had in kind of the what's next, and you had mentioned, you know, going from oil to charcoal and the reasons behind that. And as artists, we tend to uh, evolve a bit, a little bit, maybe change things up some. And you studied abstract in art school, is that correct? Yes, well, that was interesting too, because the time I was going to school in college, Ab a realism was uh, considered uh, passé, and that um, a, you know abstract art and, and uh, avant-garde art was the only way to go. And I, those were most of the instructors. I enjoyed the classes; they were interesting. Uh, they taught uh, concepts and, and design, which, as you as an artist, also you know know and understand. But I, I wasn't learning what I wanted to learn. So um, then I met per Philip Percy, as I had mentioned, and then I went to Boston University, which had some realism, but the but I kept going for it, the realism. So that's why I later continued my training um, with the Frank Riley system because that was realism. I had to go outside the university system to study what I always wanted to study. And, and, uh, and that was, uh, I wanted to do the realistic portraits. But, um, the, but what's interesting, as I took the abstract, the classes on abstract art and the, and the concepts and the, um, the thinking process, I absorbed it. And so there's elements there that I enjoy. So I have, I, even in my Stars of Hollywood Boulevard series, there's a sense of design, there's an abstract concept that's like the foundation of the uh, artwork, then the realism takes over. So I actually combine it. And that's art that I really love and favor is where there's a little bit of both. I mean, a lot of realism, some of the abstract ideas because um, it's design, it's really design. So, I, I, in the end, I feel blessed that I had the opportunity to study both. So um, we've, we've got a, a comment in here, and, and this is a glowing comment for you, and from Wayne Todd, and he had, he had said, it was, it's great to hear your interview, um, and you've been a huge influence on him and his work. He started with abstract as well, and uh, so you've been a, a big influence on Sir Wayne Todd. There you go. Did you know that, Fran? Oh, yes. He, he has pointed that out and thanked me very much. I, I gave him some tips on, on drawing uh, faces and um, mentored him a little bit by, by email, pointing out some things. And he's a very, very fast learner, and he's progressed beautifully. So did you, uh, and I thought I had the exclusive on that. I do not. That's OK. <laughs> Uh, did you have, we have a, from Joel Shapiro, did you have a chance to study abroad? Yes, I did. I did, as a matter of fact, I studied in Venice and it was wonderful. I lived, um, people who know Venice, I lived five minutes from the Basilica St. Marco. I studied at the Palazzo Grazi Center for Costume Design and Painting and, um, Again, <laughs> the, the instructors were pushing the uh, abstract conceptual art, and um, I had to go along with it because I was getting grades, but I did both. <laughs> and, uh, and it was a, you know, an amazing experience to uh, be there. Uh, but another interesting thing is I have, I have here and there, I've taken classes in, in other areas other than, in addition to painting. I, study the sculpture and uh, jewelry making and pottery and uh, part of the, the university system mostly. And then in Venice, we had a class, I elected to take a class in glass blowing, and had the uh, um, opportunity to meet uh, Archimedes Seguso, who was the world master at the time of, of the art form. And I took a class and where I made the uh, model 
uh, form and sculpture of, in another medium. And then he actually did the work in the, uh, in the fire, uh, in the oven to create the, the glass sculpture. It's over here if you can see it. Mm -hmm. I'm, sure you, I'm very heavy, I'll try to lift it. Oh, 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 it's very, very heavy. It looks yes. heavy. Oh, very heavy. Wow. <laughs> And I, it was really a thrilling experience because it was like watching a baby being born. It was creation from molten glass. And he told me that that was very similar to a piece he did at the start of his career, which is interesting. Thanks. And that was my one experience with, with glass, but it was unforgettable. And uh, of course, being in Venice and, and the art that's there and, and every, uh, I believe there were 28 churches and each, each had art that was... I don't know how they kept it so available to the public and, and, and it stayed safe. I don't, I never understood that, but it was, the art was quite amazing. So do you find, you know, as you, your career goes and you enter kind of different phases of things and you've obviously, you've classically trained, you've got influences from abstract, from realism, from some amazing instructors, do you, do you feel something as like a transition, do you think, as you move forward? Is there, is there something that you want to experiment with um, in any form? Kind I don't think so, because I really, I've worked on as, in portraits pretty much my whole life. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's what I enjoy most. I've, I've uh, painted landscapes, but I'm drawn to, I'm a people person and I enjoyed doing the portraiture. And so I started with oils and then went to the, I did some pastels and I now with charcoal. And uh, what I enjoy so much is the, uh, in the drawings um, that I'm presently doing is I, use, I enjoy so much capturing the feeling of the subject, which is a challenge. It's not as easy as it sounds and um, and, and just having the pleasure of it meaning so much to the people that I do it for. I'm enjoying that now. Where I'll go with it, probably the direction will never really change. It's, it's who I am. So did, was there a point, um, you know, on a piece that you've worked on that was, it was a struggle? You were, you were trying to find it and, uh, you know, we, we all go through those moments where you're like, oh my goodness. And, uh, and, and maybe not even, you know, you, you mentioned really trying to capture that essence of the person and you had mentioned a story. Um, is, there, is there something that was in a piece that you did that was like, good night, man. How am I gonna get through this? Well, yeah, I mean, it's one in particular. I, uh, it's not up here, but there was one in particular with the hands and I wasn't, uh, it, was a, it was a struggle with the hands. It was a three quarter piece. And I was uh, working on it over and over in the hands. Everything else was done. And I just said, I gotta take a break. And I drove off to, and I was living in New York at the time. And I drove off and stayed in the Hamptons for four days. <laughs> I came back relaxed. <laughs> I came back relaxed with my mother. <laughs> was all nervous because she didn't know where I was. <laughs> and of course I wasn't relaxed too long after that. <laughs> but I, get to, I, I realized also that I had to stay closer in touch with her. She was getting older. And, um, and so then I finished the hands, you know, like within the day. And it turned out to be, it won the best in show oil award in one of the uh, special uh, art exhibits and um, exhibitions in New York. Nope. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> yeah, here I go. I just thought of that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> it, it, almost each portrait has its own story. Oh, yeah. There's another story that you might be interested in that we, I believe we did mention at the uh, rehearsal a couple of days ago. Um, that I had painted the portrait of um, Dr. Davinio, Vincent Davinio, Nobel laureate. Yes. Chemistry, and uh, he had passed away. You know, he, he was a, you know, by, it was a posthumous portrait, and the son, also by the same name, uh, had hit, hit the gold medal, and his 
academic robes and um, I did a little surgery. I called it surgery at no pain. <laughs> and we had, uh, he posed and I had a photograph of his, of his face and another, and I painted the painting that you see. And the uh, family loved it, loved it. And they um, wanted to, the National Portrait Gallery, this was, oh, in the 80s. And the National Portrait Gallery has wanted to acquire the painting for its collection. And the family agreed. And um, the, the mother of the family, uh, who is extremely attached to the painting, of her, of her father-in-law, and, um, and it meant so much to her husband that she won't, she can't give it up. <laughs> she just wants to keep looking at it in her dining room. So, <laughs> so that's where it is for now. For now and later on, it'll go on to the National Portrait Gallery. That's amazing. We'll tell you, I've got, I've got two more questions. Um, and before I ask, we have from Karen and then from Eric. Um, I want to just make mention one more time that everyone can see what Fran has this evening uh, for purchase at bit.ly forward slash Fran Lou Studio. Some amazing works that we've been cycling through tonight from the stars of Hollywood. Um, she also does have commissions open. So please talk with your representative about that and she would be more than happy to do a commission for you. Uh, and with any purchase this evening, you get a limited edition uh, Chuck Jones portrait which is a $225 value, which I think is an amazing gift. Um, now, Fran, I wanted to ask, this is from Karen. And Karen asks, uh, what is the subject of your next artwork? Can you say? Portraits. Portraits. <laughs> no, but like, do you have, do you have something, um, and this actually might dovetail with Eric. Oh, yeah, no, it's, a port it's a portrait of, a, of a, um, someone I know as a surprise, I can't mention his name, but a, of a surprise gift for his girlfriend for her birthday. Excellent. And, um, and, and he hopes that by giving her this gift, she'll know how much she means to him. <laughs> and we won't say any names and we won't give any more hints. That way we don't blow it. <laughs> That's right. You're right. right. And you know, yeah, Eric has I a- have another Marilyn Monroe that yeah. I would like to do when she was younger. I haven't done one when she was younger. So that'll be as, come as a surprise a little later on. So that, that kind of dovetails then into Eric's question was, um, you know, what portraits or subjects have you created for your own pleasure? Pieces that maybe aren't even for sale. It was just for you. Oh, that's interesting. When I, uh, good question, thank you. Um, when I uh, took my break after 20 years of painting large portraits, I um, explored and I worked in a pastel and did figurative uh, drawings totally for my imagination. And uh, I did a whole series of angel series of figurative drawings. And I may post one or two up in uh, Facebook uh, in a week or two just to show you the variety. But it's imaginative and it's uh, not related It's color and it's not uh, and it's not related to a portrait, it's figurative work, which I enjoy. I enjoy faces and figures, both. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, I, I wanna say, first of all, thank you audience for the questions. Uh, I appreciate that. And as we wrap here this evening, um, again, it's bit.ly forward slash Fran Lou Studio. You can see all of her amazing work um, with the stars of Hollywood. We have the gift with purchase, which is Chuck's portrait right here, which is absolutely stunning and commissions are available. Um, Fran, as we close tonight, I just want to tell you that, and, and I know I, I said this when we did our, you know, kind of pre-interview and, and even when I started this off, um, I could listen to you talk in your stories. I could just sit there. I'll, I'll have a glass. You keep going because I found you to be one of the most fascinating people and you, you're very humble in how you just openly talk about things. You, your sharing of information, you're very giving, you know, of yourself. And then clearly, as you've inspired, um, you know, one of our guests tonight in, in just giving some advice and some tips and stuff like that. Um, I got to tell you, it's I, I wish, I hope someday soon 
I get to meet you in person because thank you very much. Uh, I feel like I have, you. Well, and thank you've you. Been a yes. delightful host, and I felt very comfortable and enjoyed meeting you very much. And one of your children too. Yeah, <laughs> so right. I had two of them running around, dropping in the shot. <laughs> um, and so it just, it, you have been an absolute delight and a pleasure. And you're, you're the reason, it's, it's someone like you that is the reason that we do these Chuck Jones Creative Side Chats. Because I'm, I, I was inspired when you were discussing in our pre-interview, you know, with you're just, you're going for it and your stories, how you were doing things inspired me. And I'm glad we could share that with everybody tonight. So dear, you, uh, you're a gem. Thank and, you. And I wanted to say, if there was, I wanted to give it to you, the floor, to close out. What, what would you like to say to our guests this evening? Well, I guess I would like to say thank you for all your support and the love that I receive from you. And, and um, it's actually wonderful. I, 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 it's a pleasure for me to share my work with you. Um, it's a joy, and uh, I appreciate it more than I can say. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful feeling to uh, have your work appreciated, to share it with people who are genuinely uh, kind and um, and interesting. Well, you are a, you're a blessing to us all, dear, and it's a, this is why these things are so important because I believe it's important for people, collectors, and just people in general, um, people who appreciate art to meet the artist behind the creations themselves. I think it's so important. So Fran, thank you again so much. I'd like to say a special yes. thank you to you for being um, a wonderful host. I have felt totally relaxed with you and enjoyed uh, the interview and the questions and feel your uh, sincerity and it's, uh, you're great at it. Well, thank <laughs> and you, I've, and I, and I want to say a special thanks to the Chuck Jones Gallery. I'm extremely proud to be part of the gallery and the continuation of Chuck Jones' legacy. And a special thanks to Robert and Craig for making a, a, a real the work that we do together a real pleasure. They're both wonderful and full of high integrity, and I couldn't be happier. I agree. And, and to that, Fran, I think you have a glass. I have a giant glass. Would you raise a glass? <laughs> Here's Fran to you, to Robert and Craig. There we go. Thank Let's you. Let's all do this again in person sometime. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a great night. And we look forward to seeing you on the next Chuck Jones Creative Side Chat.